the world that light and life did not penetrate. Deep beneath the continents, one rock reigns supreme. But when heat and pressure build, even that green giant can't resist the strain. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hi, I'm Leo, and this is the Rock of the Day. I noticed that it has greenish yellow sparkles. It's black and white and looks cool. I wonder where it came from. Hey Ethan, can you tell me about this rock? Thank you Leo for introducing this rock to everybody. What a beautiful rock this is. Leo noticed all the spectacular colors that this rock has. The yellow green mineral in there, that's called olivine. And the black mineral, there's a lot of black in here too, that black mineral is another mineral ingredient called pyroxene. Green olivine, black pyroxene together make this rock called peridotite. Peridotite. Now we've seen peridotites in some other episodes, for example, episode 8, which was all about the Earth's deep mantle. And that's where this peridotite comes from too, the mantle. Let's put this peridotite on our rock spinner, and I'll tell you more about the story I want to tell about this particular rock. Rocks like this are ripped out of the mantle by explosive volcanoes that erupt them up onto the surface where we can study them here on the crust where we live. We call rocks like that xenoliths. The word xenolith literally means foreign rock. It's a rock from a different place, a strange place, but we welcome these xenoliths into our laboratories so we can learn about the amazing place that it came from, the mantle. The mantle, a place where magmas are born, and the mantle is a place that allows plate tectonic movements to happen. Now, if you think about it, it's almost as if the continents are floating on top of the mantle. But I want to tell you something right now. The mantle is not liquid. The mantle is solid. It's made out of rock like this, peridotite. And it's that solid peridotite that can actually flow and deform. I have a scientist friend, and she is an expert in the study of mantle deformation. I'd like to take you to her lab so we can see what it looks like when rock deforms. Let's take that journey now. Hey, Rachel. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for uh, having us out here. Sure. Everybody, I'm with Rachel Bernard. Rachel is a professor at Amherst College here in Western Massachusetts, and we're here in the Department of Geology at Amherst College in front of this spectacular mineral display. Every one of these rocks and minerals has a story, but we're here to talk about this one, Rachel. So we had this rock back in the studio. We agreed that we liked the, the green color, the black speckles. Um, this is a rock from the mantle. And I know you know that because uh, you gave me this rock. <laughs> so that's why I wanted you to help us understand more about the stories that rocks like this one tell. Where does this one come from? This rock comes from Kilbourne Hole in New Mexico. In New Mexico. And I know you've worked on rocks and, and zenoliths from the mantle from all over the place. And you collect these zenoliths, these messengers from the deep. Um, can you show us some of the samples that you've collected? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do it. Everything on this uh, shelf right here are mantle zenoliths. Wow. The one I really wanted to show you is this one right here. Okay. Because it actually, like this rock, also comes from New Mexico. So these are from the same exact place? Yeah, they look similar on first glance, but they're actually a little bit different, and that's because this rock has actually been deformed. Deformed? Yep. The rock itself has been deformed? Yeah. This rock, if you look at it, these green and black speckles are kind of random. There's no patterns, there's no layers that we can see in this rock. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this rock, if you look closely, you can start to see that there are some layers and those layers are due to deformation. With these rocks, you start off with a rock that looks like this, and you apply pressure and squish it. Um, and through that squishing process, you kind of align different minerals, and you get 
what appears to be layers. But it's been sheared and strained and squished in making those stripes. Yeah. That's cool. So I know that you study um, these rocks not just by looking at them with your eyes, but you also use some cool microscopes, right? Yep. Um, pretty much all of my research is done under the microscope. Very cool. Can we take a look at some of those? Yeah, sure. All right, this way? Yep. All right, let's do it. So let me show you one of my microscopes. This is a petrographic microscope. That's and beautiful. we use it to look at thin sections of prototypes. Okay, now I know what a thin section is, but can you tell our friends at home, when you say a thin section, what are you talking about? So a thin section is just a really, really thin slice of rock. It's 30 microns thick that's mounted on a glass slide. So that's like thin as a piece of paper. Yeah, so even thinner because it's, it's so thin that you can actually see through. And mm -hmm. then you put that on the microscope and then the light from the microscope shines up through the rock and then magical things happen, right? Yep. Let's do it. So this is kind of what a rock or a thin section will, would look like under a normal microscope like you would use in school. Um, but as geologists, what we typically do is look at rocks under polarized light. And so to do that, we can switch in this filter and Whoa. hopefully you can see that it has turned the rock very pretty colors. That is spectacular. Friends at home, this is one of the most exciting things about studying rocks in thin sections, are all those incredible colors. So Rachel, when you look at those colors, what does it tell you? So when I look at these colors, the first thing that stands out to me is that there's some minerals that are grayish white colors. Like the great big thing in the middle. Mm -hmm. And those are actually pyroxenes, so those black minerals um, in the rock that you have there. Okay. And then the really colorful stuff, these pinks and greens and yellow, all those minerals, those are all olivines. Which are the green stuff here. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. So. The thing that's catching my eye is that giant gray thing in the middle. Yeah, so this gray blob that we're seeing was once one large uh, pyroxene grain that's been really, really stretched out. So it used to be kind of more roundish. Like and now these are sort of like round shape. Yeah, now it's stretched out. So we can actually poke around in here under this microscope and see just how long this mineral has been stretched wow. out for. Oh my goodness. So that's what a rock looks like when it's been stretched and strained, just like taffy, deep, deep in the earth. Yeah. Tell us, how did you get interested in the geosciences in the first place? Well, actually, it kind of took a while for me to find geology. When I was much younger, when I was little, I actually didn't even like going outside okay. at all. <laughs> Um, I liked being inside with my television and games and books, um, but in college I decided to kind of follow my interest in math and science and okay. major in engineering. Engineering? Mm -hmm. Interesting. And while I was taking my engineering classes, I had the opportunity to take a geology class and I really fell in love with geology. Wow. And I really liked it and thought it was so cool. Um, so I eventually, after college, decided to just only do geology. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Sure. We've learned so much. I love these rocks. And we will see you guys back in the studio. Wow, you guys, we really saw evidence that this rock deformed deep in the mantle. And how about those colors in the polarizing light microscope? That polarized light changes the way we see the light coming through. Just like when you pass polarized light through a special mineral like that green olivine, it creates colors and effects that a scientist like Rachel can understand and interpret. Rachel and scientists like her are learning a lot from zenoliths, zenoliths that come from that unusual, unfamiliar place called the mantle. When you see something a little bit unusual, a little bit unfamiliar, you want to stop. Welcome them into your lab, into your life. Ask, what is your story? That's how you're going to learn something about where that thing came from, and maybe something about yourself as well. I want to thank Rachel again for being a part of this episode and welcoming us into her lab. And I want to remember this whole thing started with this rock and Leo, who noticed those unusual colors and got us all talking. I'll see you at our next episode. Bye-bye.
Look, even the rocks on the floor have stories. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. But when the heat and pressure rise. All right, I got it out of my system. Yeah. Yep. My voice isn't as gravelly as it needs to be. I gotta try again. Mm.